starring Gregory Peck in Young Major Washington on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. But first, here is Gain Whitman. There's no time like the present to improve your home's appearance. And you'll be surprised at the fine facelifting job a little paint will do. When the paint is DuPont's Speed Easy Wall Finish, you can make your walls more beautiful in less time and for little money. Speed Easy comes in 11 beautiful colors. It dries in just one hour and costs less than $3 to do the average room in one color. Apply it over practically any interior wall surface, including wallpaper, and you'll be amazed at the room's new sparkle. Use Speed Easy, one of DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs> DuPont Company presents Young Major Washington, starring Gregory Peck as Washington, on The Cavalcade of America. Eleven o'clock, and all's well in the town of Williamsburg. The weather, fair and clear. Eleven o'clock, and all's well in the town of Williamsburg. The weather... Uh, Boy, stable my horse. No water until he cools off. Yes, sir, Major. You know if the governor is still up? There's a light in his study, sir. All right. Aye, aye, you don't have to break it in. Washington. Governor Dinwiddie, sir. Well, come in, lad, come in. I'm sorry to come in this late, sir, but what I have to say can't wait. No, but man, look at you. What's happened to you? Well, I am a little grimy. Grimy? You look as though you've been through the pit. I'll have Charles put on some water. Uh, no, sir, you. not now. My report, sir. Report, eh? Well, sit down, Major. Thank you, sir. Now, you've something to tell me, something that can't wait, eh? I have. Governor, are we prepared for war with the French? War? Washington, I sent you to deliver an ultimatum to the French, not prod them into war. I have no more wish for war than you, Governor. Then what are you talking about? It's in my report, sir. Oh, the devil take your report. Tell me in your own words. Oh, very well, sir. I took along my fencing master, Jacob von Braum, as interpreter, and picked up a guide, Christopher Gist. I left Williamsburg in October. Aye, aye, you did. And where have you been for these three months? What kept you? Sir, if you let me finish what I have to say, you'll find out. What? Sir, I'll have to remind you that I am the Governor. And may I remind you, sir, that what I have to say is important. I asked you if we were prepared to fight the French and Indians. <laughs> You're a spirited lad. All right. I'll not interrupt you further. Now, go on with your story. Thank you, sir. I just returned from Fort de Boeuf. Fort de Boeuf? What were you doing there? 500 miles away? I sent you only to the junction of the Ohio and the Monongahela to tell the French to get out of English territory. Sir, I have a report. You care to hear it or not? Then don't wait. I've been trying to get it out for the past two minutes. I'm sorry, Major. Proceed. Well, the French were not where you sent me. They'd moved on. To Venango. Where? I'll show you. Here. Now, here's where we thought the French were. Where did you get this map? I made it, sir. Hmm. All right. Go on. Well, Governor, we made our way here to the French post at the Ohio and Monongahela. It was there that we stopped, intending to deliver the ultimatum. Guess how does it look to you? Yeah, Major, you're a soldier. I'm a guide. Now, you being a soldier, you'd know something's wrong by the looks of the place. You're right, Gist. In weather like this, I'd double the guard. And the French are... Nary a soul. We haven't even been challenged. It might be a trap. It could be. But we've got to chance it. Major, you... You're not thinking of going in sight, are you? Now, many of them, Brown, since the French didn't come out to meet us, it seems we've got to go in to meet them. Come on. Like in the looks of this major. Not the soul. Desert that this place is. But look here. Plates on this table. Food. Mm, bread stale, Major. Like as not two days old. Yes. Van Brown, uh, Yamane, call out in French that Major Washington presents his compliments and wishes to deliver a message from Governor Dinwiddie. That's like talking to the dead. Go ahead. Call out. Uh, yes, Major. Le Commandant George Washington présente ses compliments. Et désire à donner un communiqué au commandant de la part de Monsieur le Gouverneur Dinwiddie. You may as well have shouted that to the wind. Come on, we'll try the next room. You better let me go first now, Major. No, you better stay behind with your musket ready. Oh, 
Major, look out! Indians! You! Stop! You! Stay right where you are! Yes, cover him! What? What do you want? What do you do here? Me, Shingis. Are you alone? Yeah, he'll never tell the truth, Major. The place is likely full of the devils. Me alone. Where are French? French leave. One, maybe two moon gone. Shingis speaks with double tongue. Shingis lies. You? You English? Yes. Where are the French who were here? Uh, maybe white brother pay wampum. Shingis tell where French go. All right, I pay wampum. You tell where French go. Into great forest. To Venango. Venango? Why, that's 40 miles or more. We got no food to take us that far. Seneca hold Six Nation powwow at Logstown. Mm, they take you to French at Venango. Major, do you think we ought to trust this Shingis? Well, I don't see what else we can do. We've got only his word for it that the French have gone to Venango. Yeah. Shingis, speak truth. I believe you. But just the same, Shingis, you're coming with us. We went to Logstown and picked up some Seneca Indian guides. From there, we made trail to Venango. The post was in command of a Captain Jonquere. He had a force of about 50 regulars and some Indian allies. I went to see him. Captain Jonquere? Oui, Major. Captain, may I present my interpreter, Menil Van Braun? I am honored. The Capitaine Jonquere. And my guide, Christopher Gist. Oh, I've heard of Monsieur Gist. <laughs> well, I have you now. Oui. But, uh, Major, uh, to what do we owe the honor of this uh, visit? I've been sent by Governor Dinwiddie to deliver a message. It's in this packet. <laughs> I am flattered, Major Washington, that you should consider me worthy of this, but... Uh, <laughs> but, uh... I am unworthy and unable to accept it. Why, sir? Oh, I'm but a poor captain. I would have no authority to read it or answer it. Is there someone here who has the authority? Oh, man, no, Major. I am the highest ranking officer here. I see. Then to whom can I take it, Captain? General St. Pierre. St. Pierre? He's here? Oh, no, Monsieur Gilles. He's not here. Then where is he? You will find General St. Pierre at uh, Fort Le Boeuf. Did you say Fort Le Boeuf? I said Fort Le Boeuf. Thank you, Captain Jonquier. You've been very kind. We shall inform General St. Pierre of your courtesy and efficiency. <laughs> and of your sense of humor. I am sorry, Major Washington. But it is to laugh, n'est-ce pas? Why? Come to this window, Major. Look, Major. The blizzards have started. The trails, such as they are, will be impassable. And Fort Le Boeuf is 100 miles from here. Yes, he's right, Major. You'll be getting into territory I don't know a thing about. You've broken trails before, Gist. Yeah, that I have, but not in a blizzard. Captain Jonquere. Oui, Major Washington? Can you furnish us Indian guides for the journey to Fort Le Boeuf? But no, Major. We'll pay them. Oh, that is not the question. You have guides? Oh, but yes. However, they are in our pay, Major. I have no wish to make General St. Pierre think I have turned into an ally of uh, you English. I see. Very well. We thank you, Captain. <laughs> I'm so sorry that I am not able to help. Yes, I imagine you are. Goodbye. Well, Governor, we left Venango. Now, here you'll see I've marked the trail from Venango to Fort Le Boeuf. It was hard going. Some of the Senecas deserted, but we finally reached Le Boeuf, and just in time. We'd run out of food, and the Senecas were becoming nasty. I presented my compliments to General St. Pierre and waited to see him. What is he waiting for? We've been here for hours. I am glad. At least I'm resting. <laughs> Van Brom, you're not a frontiersman. That I am not, Mr. Hist. I'm a fencing master. I was brought on this trip as an interpreter. And for what? Not one word of French I've been speaking. I could have stayed home. Here I am frozen. Well, cheer up, Van Brom. We still have the trip back to think about. Do you have to remind me of it? I tell you that That's I... enough bickering. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Major, uh, what do you think St. Pierre is keeping us waiting like this for? I wish I knew. Gist. Mm, yeah? Back at Venango, you said you knew St. Pierre. Well, yes, I do. So what do you know about him? I know he's a tricky, sly devil, Major. Oh? In that case, he's making us wait for some purpose of his own. And what purpose could that be? Look, there was trouble at the Ohio and Monongahela. The Indians attacked an English settlement there. Yeah, and those Indians were armed by the French military. And the French were no longer there when we arrived. What are you getting at, Major? Just this. St. Pierre knows that we wouldn't have come 500 miles through a blizzard to deliver some unimportant message. Well, you would be a fool if you thought that. And St. Pierre's nobody's fool. All right, Major, go ahead. Go ahead. Just, and Brown, now that we're here, 
When the packet's delivered, you may as well know what was in it. You may as well know what we're in for. Uh, what, Major? Dinwiddie sent the French an ultimatum to get out of English territory and stay out. Well, that's strong, huh? That uh, could mean a war. But why does Saint Pierre keep you waiting? The ultimatum should have been. Come in. Major Washington, General Saint Pierre presents his compliments and wishes your presence at your convenience. Ah, there we are, Major. Yes. Thank you. I'll be right there. Major, Major be careful. Be careful now. We're 500 miles away from any help. Yes, it would be easy for Saint Pierre to liquidate us. No one knows we're here but him. Sure, Dinwiddie thinks you went to the Ohio Mahongahela. <laughs> That's perfect for Saint Pierre. <laughs> yeah, we shouldn't get back to our territory. Well, maybe it was the blizzard or, oh, or the Indians. Please, please, must you talk like this? It, it is no good. No, it's not. Well, I've got to see him now. Keep a sharp watch, Gist. Yeah, yeah, that I will. I'll be back as soon as possible. Major Washington, for the birth is honored. Thank you, sir. The honor is mine. Oh, you are too kind. Oh, please to sit down. So, Major, you came 500 miles through the blizzard. Oh, I had orders, General. I carried them out. Just so, monsieur. You are a magnificent soldier. Thank you. I've heard of you, sir. <laughs> so, <laughs> it is flattering to think that uh, an English officer should take notice of a French soldier. Oh, I see you have the packet on your table. Packet? Oh, that one right there, sir. I brought it. Oh, yes, uh, to be sure. You uh, haven't opened it. But no, I was busy. A soldier's life, you understand. Of course. But, General, you do intend to open it and read it? You are so anxious, Major. Your sense of duty does you credit. Will you open it now, sir? Mm-hmm. Oh, but what am I thinking of? That matter can wait until you have eaten, until your guides have been taken care of. But General, I should prefer that you open it and read it now. I must return to Williamsburg with an answer. Oh, then you know what is in the packet. Something very important to judge from your anxiety about it. Do you know what is in the packet, Major? I give you my word of honor, General, that I did not open it. And if you did not open it, you could not read it, n'est-ce pas? Your perception is admirable, sir. <laughs> Just so. Now, if you will please to follow me. Uh, the packet? Oh, it can wait, it can wait. What is a message from one official to another? You and I, we are soldiers. We must take all that life has to offer I, at the moment. I'm afraid I, I don't understand that. Well, I will put it another way, Major. Let us say that a soldier never knows from one minute to the next whether his life will be safe or not. That you understand, Major. General St. Pierre, you put it so plainly that the most stupid man in the world would understand. And you are far from stupid, mon ami. Now come, I will show you to your quarters. After you, sir. Major, you are making matters no better. Please sit down. I'm getting nervous. You're nervous. You should have been in there with me, with St. Pierre. Uh, what do you think he's up to? Yes, he's playing for time. He deliberately ignored the message, pretended to be busy with other things. And you? Did you tell him? Oh, I'm, I'm not a fool, Van Brown. The moment I tell him I know what's in the message... Yeah, you get us killed, for sure. Oh, but he would not dare. It would start the war. He wouldn't dare. St. Pierre knows we're helpless, miles from our nearest outpost on the Allegheny. We should have sent word back to Dinwiddie that we had to come up here. Now, what good would that have done we will be protected. Oh, don't be so naive, Van Brown. Would there be any witnesses to our death? Please not to talk like that, Major. Well, what would you have me do? Pretend we're not in danger? Eh, we're in for it, that's sure. There's only one thing I can do. Keep up the pretense of ignorance. Ignorance of the contents of Dinwiddie's message. And then? Well, St. Pierre's playing for time. Why? We have asked that question a hundred times, and still we do not know the answer. But when we know, then we can act accordingly. Yes, uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Our Seneca guides, where are they? Here, yeah, that's another thing now. I ain't seen hide nor hear them since we got to La I haven't either. They uh, may have gone back to Logstown. No, I don't think so. We'll need them if we have to leave here in a hurry. Better look around, Gist, and see where they are. Yeah, it's a safe wager. They're up to no good. Them and the French are thick as thieves. Oh, well, we may have to get to the Allegheny without them. You think we can do it? Well, we come up this way and you made a charge, didn't you, Major? Yes, but that'll do us no good on the way back. But why not? Because that's the way Saint Pierre will expect us to return. Listen. Hmm? What's that? Gist and Brown, look. What's the matter, Major? Come here and see. Well, 
There's the reason for St. Pierre's delay. Soldiers? That's very plain now. Those men were out on an expedition. They just got back. Oh, so, so what about it, Major? That tricky devil. Don't you see? He had to wait for this company to get back. Yeah, yeah, now I see it too. Major, he means to dispatch him back again. To English territory. Major, you're right. He's going to reject the ultimatum to withdraw French forces from English territory. And before I can get back with his answer, he'll have a striking force ready for a surprise attack. Dinwiddie won't be ready for it. Unless you can get back and, and warn him. And that we must do. You are listening to Gregory Peck in Young Major Washington on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. As the second part of our story opens, Major Washington and General St. Pierre are walking through the courtyard of Fort Leboeuf. Well, Major, we have a strong fort here, hmm? Yes, it looks strong, General. Looks? <laughs> but it is, mon ami, impregnable. Well, I, I wouldn't say that, sir. No? Well, then, Major, as a brilliant tactician, how would you conquer Fort Leboeuf? Well, the forest hems you in on the southwest, doesn't it? True. What of it? I should mount an attack from that direction. For... Oh, but my dear Major, that is the most heavily defended part of Folly Birth. Is it, General? But of course. But there are no cannon in the embrasures. Oh, uh, you noticed that? Yes, there were five when I arrived. Hmm, you are observant, Major. Also, the fort seems to be undermanned. Scarcely a handful of men. But Folly Birth is in French territory. We have no reason to keep a large force here. No, perhaps not. But it hardly seems likely that such an important post with the general in command would be garrisoned so lightly. <laughs> a good general can make an hundred men do for a thousand. Of course, there is something in that. But uh, another point. We? Oui. Oh, it is splendid of you to teach uh, me military tactics. A pleasure, general. But uh, as I was going to say, the barracks, uh, they, they seem to have been occupied recently. However, now, blankets and tent rolls are gone. I see. I see. It is no good trying to joke with you, Major. You are right. A large force does belong here, but at the moment there is a little expedition into uh, the north. Oh, I see. I might have known that General Saint Pierre would not be foolish enough to put up with a small garrison. Merci, Major Washington. And now, uh, Major. Uh, Major Washington. Oh, guest. What is it? Uh, I'd like a word with you, sir. Uh, not Van Brown. Van Brown, what's the matter with him? Uh, well, sir, a thousand thousands. Uh, excuse me, Major, Monsieur Guest. Oh, what about Van Brown, Guest? It, it ain't about him, Major. It's the Senecas. Oh, where are they? Oh, they're here, all right. But every one of them's as drunk as a lord. Ain't no good to us that way. Oh, all right, Guest, thanks. Yeah. What's up with him? Oh, he's already sent out the forces with five cannon. Looks like he means it to be war, then, sir. Then what, he won't have a chance to get ready. Guess how soon can you leave? I've had my pack ready since we got here, Major. Good. Tell Van Brown we'll leave before morning. What about Governor Dinwiddie's message? Some people think it's funny that we don't wait for an answer. I'll take care of that. Now, off with the gist. Okay. Oh, Major Washington. I thought you had gone to bed. Sir, I've been here three days now. I'd like an answer to the governor's message. How strange you should come to me at this moment. Uh, I have just finished writing an answer to it. Here. Thank you, General. And uh, when do you plan to leave with it, Major? Well, I had thought about uh, the morning. Good night, sir. Uh, one moment. Yes? In case uh, you should lose the package, uh, Major, it is wise that you should also know my answer. Which is? Sir. You may inform Governor Dean Witte that I reject without reservation his ultimatum to get out of any territory we now occupy. Good night, sir. We left Fort Leboeuf, Governor. Without guides? Well, they were still drunk the next morning. Nothing we could do about it. Well, sir, we went as far as we could on horse. Then the trail and the weather became too difficult for our mounts. To make matters worse, Van Brom stepped into a snowdrift and wrenched his leg badly. We expected Indian attack every moment. But finally, oh, we had to stop. Uh, it 
It's no use, Major. It's got to be Gist. We've already passed the French force. We'll be in time to warn Dinwiddie. But we will never get there. I know. I know. And him, sir, he can't make another half mile with his leg. Then we've got to carry him. I can't hardly walk myself, Major. And if we... I know! Indians, run for cover! Major! We're not forgetting you, Van Brom. Come on, Gist, help me. Why do they not attack? Why do they torture us? They will kill us. Shh, quiet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know why the Indians haven't attacked? I know, right. Because they know we're almost done for. They're playing with us. Playing us, letting us go on and on until we almost reach the Allegheny and our outpost then. And then they'll come in and finish us off. And we've got to get through. Now, look. We're here on this chart. Five miles from the Allegheny. Uh, might as well be 500. Then Brom can't walk another step. He wasn't cut out to be a frontiersman, Major. He's not going with us. <laughs> Major, you wouldn't do that. No, no, it's not what you think. I'll show you tonight. Now we'll carry him until it gets dark, and then we'll see if my trick will work. All right, Gist, this is as far as we go now. The Allegheny's up ahead. Van Brown's faded. Well, maybe that's better. Now, get some firewood. Hi, are you crazy? We... Uh, I'm begging your pardon, Major. Trust me. Get firewood and leave me your pack. Yeah. All right, Major, if I hadn't trusted you, I wouldn't have gone this far with you. Here's my pack. Good, get firewood. Major. Major Washington. Van Brown, lie quietly. Where are we? Almost home. I can't go no farther. Well, you don't have to. We're leaving you here. What? Leaving me? Oh, no. Please, Major. No, I... You'll be safe. Now, please listen to what I say. There's a cave on this hillside. We'll put you in it with all the food we have left. But the Indians... Don't worry about them. They'll follow Gist and me. Yeah, here you are, Major. All right. Now, start a fire. Yeah. What have you done with our packs? Made them look like three men hunched over a fire. Now, get the fire going. Yes, sir, Major. Hurry. Yeah, it's hard to catch a spark in this dam. Yeah, yeah. There she goes. That ought to give them a good silhouette. Yeah, and something to shoot at. What next, Major? We'll get Van Brown to that cave, and you and I will make for the river. Gist, the Allegheny. Yes, we're not over it yet, Major. No. By now, the Indians have discovered our trick with the fire and packs. We'll have to make a run for it. I hope the ice is thick enough to hold us. Well, that's the chance we'll have to take. Don't run in a straight line. Across that river, we'll be safe. Well, come on, Gist. Right. Ice looks, looks thick to our left. That's you. You lead, Major. They've seen us. Make for that clump of trees. Across the river. Faster, Gist. Faster. I can't, Major. Not much water. Hey, help! Your hand. Give me your hand. Hold on. Hold on. Now, can you run? Yes. Yes, I can. Let's go. Gist. Gist, they've stopped following us. Our outpost is just ahead. Gist, we're there. Well, sir, we reached our outpost. I warned them about the French, took time to send a party back for Van Brown. Rested one night. Van Brown was brought in the next day. I... Well, that's about all, sir. Major, I... Oh, the devil, take me for a fool. You must be dead tired. Well, I am sleepy, sir. And sleep you shall. If you please, sir, I'd like a fresh horse. Fresh horse? Man, what for? Well, I must ride on to my home at Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon? What for, lad? What for? I'd like to be home on my birthday. Birthday, you say? Well, lad. And how old will you be, Major? On the 22nd of the month, sir, I'll be 21. Greg 
Gregory Peck will return to our cavalcade microphone in a moment. Now, here is Gaines Whitman. Have you heard about the motorboat that flies? It saved the lives of flyers forced down at sea during the war. Now it will be used by the Air Sea Rescue Service of the Coast Guard. From the nearest land base, a transport plane takes off with a flying motorboat slung underneath. Three giant parachutes made of DuPont nylon yarn let the boat down. It hits the water with a splash, and then a lot of things happen automatically. Smoke and light signals go off. Rockets fling out 200-foot lines on either side of the boat so that weakened survivors can haul themselves aboard. The boat has two engines with a cruising range of 500 miles and a pair of sails. Storage lockers contain more than 80 items, everything for the treatment of injured survivors. Food, clothing, blankets, fishing tackle, a radio, even a still to manufacture drinking water from seawater. The Higgins Airborne Lifeboat has just about everything that a life-saving craft can possibly have, stowed away in the least possible space with the greatest possible efficiency. It shows what really can be done when modern design gets to work on an old problem. And, as might be expected, chemistry plays a considerable part in its design. Not only in the three strong, tough DuPont nylon parachutes, which lower it safely to the water, but also in the cellophane, which, during the manufacture of the boat, covers the mold in which the strong hull is formed. The new airborne lifeboat offers an unusual example of the way in which, in hundreds upon hundreds of little-known applications, improved devices make use of the products of chemistry we call DuPont Better Things for Better Living Through Chemistry. <laughs> And now, once again, here is our star, Gregory Peck. Thank you. Thank you, Gregory, for being with us tonight and for turning in such a swell job. Well, you do pretty well yourself, Kane. Well, if you're going to start passing compliments, I'd like to mention your work in the Metro Golden Mayor production of The Yearling that's being released soon. Well, that's a great story, Kane. A Pulitzer Prize winner in Technicolor, you know. But what about next week's Cavalcade? I'm glad you brought it up. It's called Star in the West. Cavalcade is dramatizing an exciting story of early Texas on its centennial anniversary. A story of devotion and labor and love which wrought the miracles of the American frontier 100 years ago. And we'll have Ida Lupino with us in the leading role. Oh, that's great. Ida Lupino is one of my favorites, Kane. I'll be listening. Thank you, Gregory. And once more, congratulations on a fine piece of acting tonight. Good night. Good night. Music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. A Cavalcade play was written by Robert Kaniger. In the cast with Mr. Peck were Raymond Lawrence, Howard McNear, Ramsey Hill, Roland Varno, George Sorrell, Ed Max, Stan Waxman, Hal Dawson, and Jerry Hausner. This is Tom Collins inviting you to listen next week to Ida Lupino in Star in the West on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.